Guess what? It's time for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and this is episode 117, and it's our long-awaited profile of the amazing Tony Jaa. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you don't know, makes the absolute best martial arts sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I want to welcome the new listeners and thank all of you that have come back again. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I really suggest you do, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. You've probably heard me talk about our sparring gear before. Heck, it's the whole reason I founded Whistlekick. But what you may not know, unless you're subscribing to the newsletter, hint, hint, is that we now have our top-notch sparring gear in a brand new color, blue. It's an awesome blue, and the gear really looks incredible. So check it out at whistlekick.com and get yours today. So today we're talking about Tony Jaa. When his name pops up, people think about the Ong Bak movies and his unique martial arts choreography. But how did he get started? What makes him tick? Well, I'll tell you. Tony Jaa was born in Thailand in 1976 and used several names before taking his English name, Tony the most popular of them being the name he started using in Thailand in conjunction with his movie career, Ja Phanom. He was raised in a rural area by his parents, who herded elephants. As a kid, he watched martial arts movies and fell in love with the genre, specifically movies by Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, and Jet Li, though he's also named Donnie Yen as an inspiration. Here's a quote. What they, Chan, Lee, and Lee, did was so beautiful, so heroic, that I wanted to do it too. I practiced until I could do the move exactly as I had seen the masters do it. At age 10, he started training in Muay Thai at the local temple. He later enrolled in a physical education college where he studied martial arts and other disciplines. He spent some time competing in Muay Thai and retired with a record of 5-0. He holds black belt rank in Taekwondo and Wushu. We know that many of our martial arts movie heroes have skills, but how many of them can we look at something as concrete as a fight record. And if you've ever seen Muay Thai fighting, you know just how brutal it can be. Some people call it Thai boxing, right? Before his acting career, Tony was a notable stuntman, with his two most famous appearances coming with, first, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, where he doubled for Robin Shao, who played Liu Kang, and then doubling for Samuel Hung in an energy drink commercial, where he somersaulted from an elephant's tusks onto its back. Unfortunately, That video doesn't seem to be available online. I've never seen it, but I read several accounts of it, uh, even from Tony Jaa himself, and it sounds pretty neat. We did find a bizarre commercial Tony Jaa appeared in where he seems to be endorsing fruit. It's pretty strange, but you can see it in the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And yes, for some reason, there's some fight work. Um, I don't speak the language, so I can't translate it for you. Through his stunt work, Tony Jaa and director Pana Ritakrai developed an interest in Muay Baran, the predecessor to Muay Thai, and decided they'd make a movie about it. Though they spent four years training and working on the film, they were only able to put together a short movie showcasing Jaa's skills. They showed it to a number of people, including movie producer and director Prachya Pinkow. It was this introduction that ultimately led to Ong Bak and catapulted Tony into the limelight. He did all of the stunts for the movie without any mechanical assistance or computer graphics, just real martial arts and acrobatics. If you've seen the movie, you know how incredible it is. And some of those fight scenes, some of that choreography is just over the top. And if you remember, there's a scene where he's on fire and he's still fighting. He was actually on fire. And here's what he had to say about that. I really had to concentrate because once my pants were on fire, the flame spread upwards very fast and burnt my eyebrows, my eyelashes, and my nose. Then we had to do a couple more takes to get it right. Can you imagine having your hair burned and still needing another take? Sounds painful. But that's why Tony Jaa does what he does, and I host this show. His films caught the eye of one of his idols, Jackie Chan, who pushed hard to have Tony Jaa included in Rush Hour 3. Talk about praise. Jackie said this of Tony. I gave the director videos of Tony Jaa because I think Tony Jaa is the most well-rounded of all action stars. Wow, it's incredible, right? Now, the role was his, but he turned it down because he was shooting Ang Bak 2. 
2014 saw his most star-studded role when he appeared in Dolph Lundgren's film Skin Trade alongside Michael Jai White and Ron Perlman. There's a great fight scene in the film between Tony and Michael, and we have that in the show notes. His next role will be in the 2017 scheduled film Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. His character is named Talon, but that's all we know at this point. Tony's social media is full of images of him living life, showing his travels and experiences around the world, as well as a lot of great photos and videos of him kicking and doing other moves. Tony's also an advocate for abolishing the ivory trade, and a lot of that surely goes back to his youth, riding elephants, and his parents herding elephants, and we've seen some of that pop up in social media. If you follow Tony John on social media, which you should be doing, you've seen him come out and be very public and, and very forceful against any abuse towards elephants. And some of that may tie into his Buddhist practices. He is a, um, he even spent some time in a monastery as a Buddhist monk. It's easy to see why Tony Jaw is such a fan favorite. He's an excellent martial artist with a fresh style in his movies and a genuine personality that makes you feel like he really could be your friend. What's your favorite Tony Jaw movie? Let us know at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram with the username Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, somebody you want us to profile on a Thursday show, go ahead, fill out the form on the website. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we've got going on. And you can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, like our new blue sparring gear. Get that there or over at Amazon. And that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.